something I've been doing every year now, we, we do what we call the American Energy Tour. And each year we take a few members of Congress out to a deep water rig in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we just had that, uh, that tour about a week and a half ago, went to a, a rig that uh, that's operating about 60 miles south of the Port Fouchon in the Gulf. And they, they drill about 4,000 feet deep to, uh, to go into some of these just massive reservoirs and finds that we found in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, the, the one that they're looking at uh, right now, they were actually drilling in the process of drilling. Uh, they'll probably go not only 4,000 feet below the, uh, the the surface, but they'll, they'll go another 30,000 feet or so to get to the uh, to the reservoir where there's oil. And if and if you spend your your couple of billion dollars of private money to go and and finally actually find a big find of oil, uh, then you're going to still have to spend probably another four billion dollars to extract it. And at some point, years and years down the road, you'll make a profit, and that's when President Obama will target you as the enemy and come after you. So you wonder why, uh, you know, why it's such a challenge to produce energy in America with these policies. But, uh, but it's really good to get members out that have never been and to see a, uh, a deep water rig and how just the technology that's involved, the skills that are involved. And these are great high paying jobs. The rig we were on, that rig alone, there's probably 120 to 150 people living and working on that rig every day. It costs about a million dollars a day to run the, the operation. There's probably about a thousand American jobs tied to it. And the average pay is well over $60,000 a year. You can leave high school. You can leave high school and be making $50,000 a year with great career opportunities. There are people working on that break making six figures. Uh, and so again, this is a, you know, it's a great American success story. We're seeing the shale plays across the country in the deep waters of the Gulf. And, and unfortunately, the biggest impediment they face is, is federal policy. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of it coming from this administration. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that. I know we're right in the middle of sequestration, and you know, tomorrow they're going to have what's called snowquestration now. <laughs> There's a global warming hearing I've heard that's going to be held in the Senate side tomorrow. That you know, I, I do say God has a sense of humor. And Al, Gore, Al Gore has actually been snowed out twice now for years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, take that however you will. You know, I don't want to get political about this issue. That's the last thing I'm going to do. But I, um, I, I will say that, you know, in the RSC, and I'm glad we've got uh, a few of my colleagues and we'll hear from each of them uh, today too. I'm sure each will have their own take. But uh, the fact that you know all of these threats for the last couple of weeks, the president's flying all around the country on Air Force One with a scare tour, telling everybody that you know every food inspector is going to be laid off, but we can't cut the 26 billion dollars in fraud that we know about in the food stamp program. It's only the meat inspectors that get shut off. Every school teacher and firefighter. And, you know, we've been combing through the, uh, the the law books to figure out where the president hires and fires school teachers and police officers. But I do think you know, that was a joke too, because we don't. Know. But, uh, but they don't know that because they all think they're going to get laid off. And uh, you know, and so you know, all the TSA. So yesterday I go to the airport to fly back to uh, to DC, and literally it was probably the shortest wait I've had in uh, in, in months. And, and maybe it's because the president just scared everybody away from flying because you thought there'd be three hour waits at the airport. It was literally like five minute uh, wait and you know you talk to some of these TSA agents I mean these are all, these are all people that have jobs and they you know they don't know what to expect from the president but when the when the jet when the, the head of the architect of the Capitol has to correct a misstatement by the president about janitors uh, being being fired and getting cuts in pay and, and he has to say it as politely as he can and he says a high level official in government said this but it's not true <laughs> and so the media has actually started to kind of make fun of the fact that the president really saying a lot of things that are just not true and, and, it, and it reached a crescendo saturday night live you know which which if you're a republican you know if, if you do everything right on a good day they'll still figure out a way to make fun of you on saturday night live the lead off on saturday night live if you didn't see it you got to go google it it's online uh, they actually, they, they not only made fun of the president's claims, you know, it starts off with him threatening all of these people, but then they literally is like, okay, you know, and then there's going to be a construction worker, and he brings out a construction worker, and by the third person you realize, he's bringing out the village people, the man. Go <laughs> <laughs> man, there's no need to do that. And then they all start doing the song, and it's just, you know, that, that's when you know the president has jumped the shark. You know? <laughs> and for once, Republicans are actually pushing conservative policy and, and getting it implemented into law despite a president trying to do everything he can with the bully pulpit to block it. So I think, I think we're at a point now where we, we finally shifted the debate, and, and, and it's important for us now uh, to not overplay our hand, because when Barack Obama can overplay his hand, it shows you there's a limit where the, the American public say, wait a minute, you're not being serious, we, we want to have an honest conversation, and that's what we've been trying to do 
for a few years now. And I think we're finally having that conversation about spending and borrowing. And if you look at jobs in the economy and the things that we've been focusing on to get control over spending, uh, when, when the president just every single day now, he gets his tax hikes and the fiscal cliff, and then as soon as this deal comes along, and Bob Woodward points out that this was the president's deal, and then they basically try to go wage a war with Bob Woodward, and you know, really smart, anybody that's read history, last president that, that actually targeted Bob Woodward, it didn't end up real well for that president. So anyway, they're, they're now waging a war on, on Bob Woodward, so, um, you know, but, but then it's all about, you know, now we got to raise taxes, and so it keeps moving the goalpost. Uh, but if you look at tax revenue, tax revenues, collections to the government, uh, have never been higher in the history of our country. This is the highest amount of money the federal government's uh, taken in, and, and yet the president still wants more tax increases, uh, and it just shows that he's not serious about addressing the problem of spending. So we're going to stay focused on what the real problem is, uh, both short-term is getting spending under control, uh, but both short-term and long-term is, is getting uh, getting not only spending under control, but getting the economy back on track, getting economic growth. And, and the things that we all believe in, conservative policy, is actually policy that's good for our country. And, and energy is a good place to start because, you know, for, for Billy and I, those of us, Bill, the floor is over here, he, you know, he understands this industry better than anybody. More jobs will be created if, if he just says yes to Keystone Pipeline, you know, 20 to 25,000 new jobs, billions of private investment, uh, the Outer Continental Shelf. Um, Morgan Griffiths is one of the members that came down with me. You know, in Virginia, they actually want to explore for energy off the coast of Virginia. And, and by the way, the revenue sharing that goes with it, the things that we do in Louisiana with the revenue that we'll finally start getting in 2017, we're going to use that to restore our coast, to actually uh, you know, repair damage and, and kind of rebuild our infrastructure with the monies that we would be getting. But the federal treasury is going to be getting billions of dollars from that and the thousands and ultimately millions of good American jobs, you know, just like those young men and women that we met out on that rig that are making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year providing for their family. Producing energy in America. Energy we don't have to get from Middle Eastern countries that don't like us. So there's so much good about energy, what it means for uh, not only for jobs, but also what it means for national security.